So, um, right, let's uh, spend some time going through um, actually setting up some goals. That moved by itself, that was worrying. Okay, um, so Sandra's taken us through kind of the practical elements of how we actually create an engagement value scale. Um, creating the engagement value scale is really important, and I must uh, urge you to spend as much time thinking about the validity of those goals that you create. Why are we tracking it? What does that mean to the business? How are we going to put some type of attribution around those goals? Um, attribution really giving us that kind of merit that says engagement means X to my brand, or it means Y to my customers. Um, so let's talk about some of the practicals. Um, just a quick hands up. Hands up who's got uh, any goals set up and running on their sites right now delivered. Great stuff. Small show of hands. Great stuff. Who's in the process of doing any type of engagement value scoping right now? Great stuff. Great stuff. Okay. So um, for those of you that aren't, um, obviously the, all the information prior to now is really important. For those of you that are going through the, part of the process of actually creating those goals and deciding what they are, um, let's talk about some of the practicalities. Um, so what are they? Well, you guys know this. Ultimately, it gives us that kind of qualitative measurement, not the quantitative. You know what the scale is and the points have been decided for you. As the points get greater, the commitment and the value of the organization grows. Where do we then start to see that data? Where do we see engagement value? Um, hands up who's using this dashboard on a day-to-day -day basis. Three or four, great stuff, okay. I'm sure many of you have other people in your organization who are responsible for actually looking at the reports too. So this is the Executive Insight Dashboard, and we'll talk about that later on. But when we start to track engagement value, the differentiator with Sitecore is that we'll see it in that little yellow line throughout all of our reports. The yellow line gives us the value metric. That is the number of aggregated value points collected per day, per week, per month, whatever resolution we're using the dashboard at. The blue line being the number of visits. From having those two metrics in place, we can then derive a value per visit metric. And the value per visit metric is what we'll then use to differentiate a customer's level of engagement. So we can say, well, if we've got a campaign that's running at 20 values per visit, we've got another campaign that's running at 50 values per visit, then clearly on the basis that we're tracking the same thing for each of those campaigns that's important to the business, campaign B is performing better than campaign A. It doesn't matter that I generated twice as much traffic on the underperforming campaign. Well, it does matter, but there's a different way of dealing with that. So that's where you're going to start to see it. The green bars there showing you the value per visit metric. So where are they in Sitecore? Well, um, hands up uh, who uses the desktop in Sitecore on a daily basis. Great stuff. So big show of hands. Brilliant. So um, the rest of my presentation is assuming that you're running on Sitecore 6.5, 6.6, 7, 7.1, or 7.2. If you're on any version before 6.5, you won't have access to this little marketing center tab at the top. Um, if you are running on 6.5, I absolutely, desperately urge you to upgrade to the latest version that's appropriate for you. The latest version I'd recommend is appropriate for most people is 7.2 right now. So if you're on 6.5, you've got to get to 7.2. There's a few little upgrade steps you're going to have to do there. The reason is, is that some of the buttons that exist inside here are a lot better in the later versions. Some of the buttons that are in there don't exist in 6.5 and 6.6 .6 that do exist in 7. Also, the quality of data and the amount of data that we collect in version 7 onwards is a lot better than the data that we collect in 6.5 and 6.6. .6. There's nothing wrong with the data in those versions, but it's a lot better, a lot cleaner, a lot easier, a lot faster, you know, a lot more usable in the later versions. If you want to know more about how to upgrade or the process of upgrading, then speak to your partner or come and grab me afterwards and I can talk you through some of my experiences with Sitecore customers. So I'm going to log in in a minute, we'll go through it, but let's just talk about some of the specifics. So um, hands up who is not familiar with the concept content item. Couple of hands there, okay. For those of you that don't know what a content item is in Sitecore, essentially it's one of those little notes. Okay, a content item can be a parent or a child, and the parent or child is defined by having a little plus icon next to it, but essentially every single item in the tree is what we call a content item. It's a unique item of content in Sitecore that has a list of fields down the right-hand side. Those fields are defined by different template types. Not presentation templates, but data templates. So what we need to do to create goals is to create more content items underneath the goals node inside the marketing center. And this is really slick and easy, and I'll show you how to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to a Sitecore installation. 
we are going to go down to the uh, marketing center in our dashboard. Helps if I log in. Thank you very much. Talk about yourselves. Come on, laptop. There we go. Okay, so once we've opened up the marketing center, you'll see the goals node over here on the left-hand side. So when you expand this, you then may see a list of existing goals that are inside your installation, which you had no idea were there. That's because Sitecore comes with three or four goals configured out of the box, just as example ones. Best thing to do, delete them. Okay, so what I would suggest you do, and don't do this if you don't know what you're doing, but go into your goals, go over to the delete button, and just hit delete the sub items. Okay, so that's if you're a fresh installation, never touched it, never used it before. So, if you want to create a goal, what you need to do is come into the goals node, right click, insert, and then choose a goal. There's some videos we'll be sharing around afterwards, by the way, that show you all this in action. So when you click on a goal, it's then gonna ask you to give that goal a name. So that name needs to map to the item on your engagement value scale, which you detailed the day before. So that might be um, registered for event. You click OK, Sitecore's gonna go away, and then it's gonna present you with a page where you then need to put in the details. There is only uh, one thing that you must do. There's a couple of things that you might want to do. So, you now need to put in the amount of engagement value points as defined on your engagement value scale. So, for this one, registering an event is 50 points for me. Once you put in 50 points, press the Save button. There are a bunch of other fields down here that you don't need to worry about, okay? I'm showing you because they are there, but you don't have to worry about those. Only really look at those or worry about them if you're working directly with your partner because they will know the specifics of what all those things do. They're quite advanced usages of goals. So, what you'll notice is that over on the left-hand side, uh, I have a couple of goals. Uh, one's registered for event, one is win a holiday for two form completed. Um, they have little flags as goals. What they don't have is the nice little icons like the yellow, blue, and green ones. So icons in Sitecore. Hands up who has fun choosing icons for stuff in Sitecore. Great stuff, I do, I spend half my time doing it. So. I'd be a lot more productive if we didn't have the icons. So what you can do is you can change the icon for these just to help you remember that they are maybe different types of goals. So in my example here, you don't have to implement this, you could just leave them all with the flag. I have gold for primary goals, I have blue for secondary goals, and green for a tertiary goal. What I suggest is that your goals in gold are kind of your over 50 point type goals, your 175, 50s, ones that are driving key business actions and key business activities. The ones in blue are maybe the kind of more menial ones, maybe under 50 points, and then the green one is a zero point value. Um, what I would normally refer to as either a tertiary goal or a referential goal, where you're tracking something because you want to track it, but it's not contributing towards the engagement value score. In the guides that Sandra's mentioned, there's a couple of bits and pieces in there about de you know, using zero point value goals. So, if you want to change the icon, you can go to the configure tab, and you can see this little icon up here. When you click on that, it's gonna give you a whole bunch of icons to play with. So, uh, this is now a primary goal for me, so I'm gonna select my primary goal, and I'm gonna hit save. Now, once you have completed the name and the points and spent an hour and a half on the icon, what you then need to do is actually get that goal out to your delivery service, okay? So, what's the one thing that we do whenever we finish with a piece of content? We publish it. If we had a good Sitecore implementation, the thing that we would do in between then is we'd apply workflow to it. So these goals come with workflow already assigned to them, and you must use the workflow. You can't take the workflow out in this example, and there's a reason for that. When a piece of content goes from your management environment, in other words, editing, to live on the website, what happens is it goes from a master database to a web database, okay? And that's a publish operation. When we have analytics, we have to get the goal from the master database to the web database, but it also has to go to the analytics database, and that's what the workflow does. So this is where we can go deploy. My goal is great. 
and you'll notice that the little yellow uh, message here saying that this is not live on the website has now gone. So once we have then deployed that using workflow, we can go up to the publish tab and we can simply press the publish button, click OK, it tells us the item is being published and that's it. We created a goal, nice and easy. Now you're kind of thinking, okay, what are those three little folders down the left-hand side there, social, system, and other? Well, that's where we're using categories, okay? So those three down the bottom left there are actually managed by the site core system themselves. So that's used by the social connected module, so that when you're sending out tweets using site core, it creates goals and campaign codes and bits and pieces. And it's also used by the email campaign manager and a few of the other plugins that are in there. Now, you don't need to touch those, you need to leave those alone, but what you might want to do is use categories for your own reasons. So you might use categories to divvy up goals by country, if you have multiple sites in different countries with different engagement value scales by country. It might be that if you just have completely separate websites, you might separate those up. There are many strategies as to why you might use the same set of goals for all of your different country websites or a different set of goals for your different websites. It's totally up to you on how you do that. I guess what you're looking from us is guidance on why you should do that. So if you have multiple sites where you have multiple countries in a particular scenario, uh, come and have a chat with Sandra or myself and we'll give you some advice and guidance on the best way to implement that. However, if you just wanted to create categories, you can go insert, goal category, and you can say, you know, this is my category, whatever that might be. I don't do spelling, by the way, just to clarify. Category, yeah, that sounds good. And then what you can do is you can right click and then you can insert a goal inside there. So, and you can go through exactly the same process. Now, a little bit of a caveat for you. If you're running on 6.5, 6.6, 7 or 7.1, you have to publish the category separately. So what you have to do is you have to come up a node and then you have to go publish. Then you go back down to the goal and you publish that goal in the same way that I showed you before. If you're running on Sitecore 7.2, you don't have to go up and publish the individual item. 7.2 introduces a new concept called publish related items. So if an item is above it or below it and has a dependency or a relation, when you publish that item, it will publish its related items alongside that. For any of the developers in the room or customers who've been working with Sitecore for a long time, that was a much, much requested feature. So that is now in 7.2 and personally, one of the major reasons to get your upgrade done. It will speed up your publishing time massively. So, that's how we then create the goal in Sitecore. So the question is, is how do we then actually allocate that goal to something? So that's what we've just gone through. How do I trigger those goals? Right, there are three ways to trigger goals. And you'll have to stay with me here. If anybody gets lost, throw a hand up, shout out, give me a, give me a heckle, I don't mind. So, the easy way to assign a goal is using the Sitecore UI. There are only a couple of ways that you can assign goals in the UI, and that's if you're using web forms for marketers, so when a customer completes a form, you can then trigger that particular goal as the form is completed, and there's a wizard. You go create form, you select the goal, done. If you are assigning a goal to a view of a page, maybe a thank you page or a, you know, a confirmation page, then you can go in, and I'm gonna show you this in a minute, you can go into the UI, you can select it, assign goal, hit save and hit publish. However, there are lots and lots of goals and web design techniques, which means that the things that we want to track are not always accessible to the marketer. They're not always accessible to the page designer or to the site called UI. So that's where we have to rely on the query string method or the API. So for example, on the Crest Nicholson site, they have functionality like MyCrest, and they have this save button here. As you can imagine, that's not a content item in the tree. That's not something that you can click on and hit assign goal. That's something that's being done by a developer. It's something that's using maybe an Ajax technique where it's doing you know, clever post back or pop-ups and all these bits and pieces. So what you might find is that half of your goals are really easy that you can complete it very quickly in the UI, and I'm gonna show you that now, and the other half of them might need to be done by a developer or one of your, or by your partner team. So, obviously, talk to your team and find out which goals are which, and then you'll be able to design you know, which ones you can uh, set up. So let's have a look at setting this up in Web Forms for Marketers. So, let's go to the page editor. And what I'm just going to do is increase the resolution because this looks a bit horrible. I don't know if this is going to work. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Oh, fantastic. 
That was good news. Okay. So, if we were to go to a page, and down here I want to add in a form. So I'm going to go insert component, I'm going to click add to here, and hopefully we have a form that we can drop in. So I press select, that's going to bring up the form wizard, and it's going to say would you like to create a blank one or would you like a form to copy? So I'm going to create a blank one. So I'm going to say sign up for my services. I click on next, and here is where you're now going to assign that goal. You have the opportunity to select a goal, which we're gonna do in a moment, or you can create a goal on the fly. So, you wouldn't necessarily want to be creating goals on the fly unless you're quite a high velocity, sort of campaign landing page type driven organization. If you're consistently rolling out new campaigns every week, then it might be more practical to create the goal here, but you would need to educate your team on the naming convention that you use for the goal. So it might be applying the actual campaign name to the goal name and then a description of what it is. Um, in a more traditional setup where the velocity of creating campaigns is quite low, then you're probably going to have your goal set up and defined for you, and then you will tell people if they're adding a form to a page, which of the goals they should select to do that. Everything that you've seen here so far and everything you will see going onwards is completely security controlled as well. I'm logged in as an administrator, I can see everything. I could control it so that you could log in and only see the select an existing goal. And that's something you can ask your developers or your administrators to set up for you. So I'm gonna select an existing goal. And as you can see, my registered for event goal is now made available to me. So I'm gonna select that, hit next, and go in and create the form. And this is where I can go in and then start adding fields. So name, telephone, hit submit. Here I can decide what happens to the data. I hit save and close. There we go. And away you go. Oh, you can see it saved it four times, lucky me. So, that's my form now put onto a page, and I've assigned my goal whilst creating the form. So that's kind of easy. Now what happens if we want to then assign a goal to a page view? Well, that's where we would then move over to the content editor. So let's say I had a thank you page, okay? So uh, underneath um, my standard items, I think I have a thank you page, there we go. So this page will be shown after a form is completed. I might not be using Cycle Web Forms for Marketers. I might be using a bespoke form and I'm just redirecting to this particular page. Or it might be you know, used in any other context. So if it's gonna be a, a thank you page that we trigger it on, what I can do is go over to the Analyze tab and I can click on the Goals item up here. And this is where I can then go in and say uh, Registered for Event. Click OK. Hit Save. Hit Publish and Workflow in the usual way. And whenever anybody views that page, a goal is going to be triggered. Um, now, we don't always assign goals to pages being viewed, okay? You are able to track page views in the standard cycle reports, which are my top pages, which pages are being viewed. You can report on the most popular pages. You can do all those bits and pieces. So you shouldn't be assigning a goal just to track a page. You should be assigning a goal to track a page if when they hit that page, they've just done something like filling out a form, registering for an event, or something particularly special. There's plenty of guidance around how to assign goals and why you shouldn't assign them to page from the marketing documents and bits that we provide. Okay, so it's not very often you're going to use that process, but hopefully you'll use the Web Forms for Marketers process. So, if your developers are tasked with triggering that goal, then naturally there's going to be some code involved. You're going to need to give them the engagement value scale, and you're gonna to need to give them some guidance and advice on which buttons and which interactions across your website design are going to be set up as goals. Naturally, this is a lot easier if you do this during the setup phase. If you are just starting out with your site core implementation now, get that engagement value scale done. It should take you no more than a day with assistance from your partner or from one of our team and then give that to your developers so they can get that into the initial build. If they can get that goal handling construct and that, those bits of goal code set up, that will save you lots of time in the future. So, we've kind of been through assigning a web forms for marketers. Um, hands up, who knows what that means? Everyone happy with that? You've jotting that down? Does anyone need another minute? Okay. 
So that is the code that you're probably going to need to give to your developers. You don't need to worry about it. They know where to find that. They know how to do that. They have access to that on the site called Developer Network. But just to say that you will likely have to allow your developers to set up those goals just because of the way that we build websites, okay? Again, using things like Ajax and Postback and technologies and things. If you are tracking things like mobile applications using Sitecore, then naturally they're going to need to build that into their mobile application, and they'll need to look at the Sitecore mobile SDKs, which have all of this tracking handling built in. Obviously, we've talked about just assigning it to websites at the moment, but those goals could be triggered from mobile apps, smart TV interactions, you know, hand gestures on touch screens, or anything like that. So does anybody have any questions about the sort of process we're going through for setting up goals? Question at the back there. Are you, have you now, are you sort of now got a historical activity which is wrongly weighted? So, with the current release at the moment, if you change that engagement value point score, which you can do by just going in, hitting save, hitting edit and republish, um, your existing data will stay at the existing value and your new data will be calculated at the new value. Um, we have this, this discussion quite a lot. What happens if you change the value of a goal over time? Do you want the weighting and attribution of that for your previous visits to be reflective of the new value? Some customers do, some customers don't. It's probably a discussion in your context to have with myself and Sandra about what's right for you. So the answer is, is that no, it won't change your existing data. If you want it to, it's relatively easy and you can just go and do some bulk operations on the database and get that data changed. There are some discussions and strategies at the moment with the analytics team about how we handle that going forward. And part of the Sitecore 8 solution will be the ability to have things like annotations and notes where in your analytics you can actually put in, okay, on this date I change this value and this will give me context if somebody else is looking at this report. So I hope that answers your question. Super. Another one over there, red top. Just a quick question about the last screen you showed with the code. Now, you said that uh, in most of the occasions you need to have that code to track the goals. Now, was that purely I API related or generally? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just code, it's stuff that you'd have to put in your controls. So your developers, so yeah. You had it under API, so is that, that's what I meant. I mean, did, does that apply to all the goal tracking that we're gonna be doing, whether it's Done uh, API or? No, if, if you're just doing everything in Web Forms for Marketers, you won't need that code. That, that, that is talking to the Sitecore Tracker APIs. So that's code that you would write in your button clicks that then talks to our APIs. Okay, cheers. Yeah. So all the tracking code is already in the platform. That's just a piece of code that calls that API to track it. Okay. Super. Um, are goals applied at the item level or are they, can they, can they be different by language version? In other words, can we set up different profiles for equivalent content in different languages? So, is a goal triggered cont contextual to, oh, is a goal independent of a language? Yes. A, when a goal is created, it is not triggered language specific. So you can have one goal that is triggered by actions on multiple language sites, because the goal is independent. You don't translate the goal like you would do a standard content item in that respect. You might decide to trigger one goal from all those languages, because it's the same goal with the same engagement value points. If the goal has a different name or a different set of engagement value points per language, then you'd have separate goals. And that's when you might use a category to say UK goals, FR goals, GB goals, or you know, whatever it might be. So yeah, you don't translate that. In terms of pivoting around that to do personalization based on a goal, what you could do is create a rule that says if they've triggered this goal, which doesn't matter which language it is, but they're on this language website, then show this language personalization version. And then you could pick the language context for the content you show, but that kind of steps outside of this discussion a bit. But yeah, they're, not in, they're, they're completely independent in that respect. So, super. I think another question down here somewhere. Oh, over there, on this side. When you set your engagement value scale, do you have to have one across your whole site or could you have a separate one for your registered and logged in members as opposed to your prospects who you want to purchase? 
Yeah, you, you absolutely could if you want to. Um, we, have this, we have this in a couple of organizations where the engagement value scales have been created maybe per business unit or per um, business strategy. So if you have one side of the organization who's responsible for measuring acquisition and one who's responsible for measuring you know, retaining, um, then you could have a different engagement value scale. I would always try and steer you to one single engagement value scale per business site because it's easier for you to get started with and then suggest you maybe break out in the future. Um, and what you could do, because you would want to say that actually somebody downloading a brochure who is on acquisition, it's actually the same value as somebody who's downloading a brochure if they're an existing customer. The difference is in the attribution model that you drive out of the reporting and the way that you interpret that, not in the way that you collect it, if that makes sense. So you can always collect at the same value, but the way that you create context when you build reports is very different. So always go for try, you know, a single scale, but if you wanted to, there's no reason. You just create different sets of goals and you can have a categories. So that would be acquisition category, retaining category, or logged in, not logged in, you know, et cetera. The complexity with logged in, not logged in, uh, is what is the percentage of your logged in users all of the time? So if you are a membership organization where half of your content is available not logged in, then what you're doing is you're tracking a user who's not logged in and then kind of creating one scale here, but then when they log in for the other half of their time with you, you're kind of tracking them in a different way. If, however, you are a gated walled garden type approach where if you're not logged in, you're purely acquisition and you're not registered, but when you're logged in, you're doing what we want you to do, then that's where the separate scales might be appropriate. So you've just got to think about cross-pollination of goals and cross-pollination of attribution. Thank you. Super. Any more questions? One more. Sorry, just to come back to that. Um, so it, are you saying that you can have two values on a user? So for instance, if you're measuring, say, monetary value by the kinds of actions that they're doing, you can measure that independently of uh, say another attribute, say their progress through the purchase process. So for instance, you can get a value on the basis that they've done three of the five things they need to buy something and you can get a value on the, the items that they've looked at tend to indicate that it's gonna be a high value item that they're gonna purchase when they, they finally do that fifth step. Well, yeah, now, now you're starting to step out into what do I do with that data and how do I interpret it? So the answer is, is we can track the goals with the value points against an individual user. Uh, we can track monetary values through any e-commerce type approach with you know, said e-commerce systems. Um, what we can do though is we could create a rule that says, you know what, if this individual has triggered goal X, Y, and Z and has spent over X and has been on the site more than three times, then show them this piece of content. That's in the personalization. You could abstract that down into the automation engine, which we won't cover at all today, that says if they match this particular segment, start up an engagement plan and start sending them emails, text messages, or direct mail through the print system to then target them. So you can store whatever you like against the user, and that can be either the engagement value or a monetary value. You can then apply either direct personalization on the web, or you could offload that to the marketing automation, which does you know, non-real-time things for you. So the answer is yes, you can identify those segments. We should talk. Sounds like you've got some good use cases. If I'm not around, grab Sandra, because I'd really like to know what you're doing and bits and pieces. Right, so, any more questions? Ah, oh, one more, go for it. Um, it may be an obvious question, but how long is the data collected for building up this profile of the engagement value of a customer? And does it then get removed, you know, if they change device or if they're, you know, after 60 days or whatever? Um, Good question. So, when uh, you turn on your Cycle Analytics database, data is collected indefinitely until you delete it or you remove it. Um, every time a user comes to the website, um, a cookie is laid. That cookie is just a unique identifier. It's not identifiable. It's just a unique identifier to Cycle. Um, if they clear their cookies and they come back to the website, they will obviously start a new session and they'll technically be cast as a separate visitor. Nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. Um, the cycle system is pretty good, though, at uh, stitching together existing users and stuff when cookies are cleared. So if a user comes onto the website and we drop the cookie, they view 10 pages and they sign up for an account. They clear the cookies on their machine, they come back a second time, view five pages, log into their account. What Cycle will do is go, oh, hang on a second. The last time they logged in, I knew that it was this particular user cookie session, but they got a new cookie, push the two together, and then we then persist that data going forward. Um, 
In terms of what you personalize on, there are rules which determine do I personalize on this session's data or do I personalize on previous session data? So when we collect goals, when we collect behavioral profiles, when we collect automation states, when we collect any of the campaigns that are triggered, in the rules engine you can say, when I'm doing something right now, personalize on what they did on, in this visit or on the last visit or on any visit that they've ever had with us. So again, that's up to you how you create the rules that do the personalization, but the data stored is pretty simple and just stays there with you.